code of conduct. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. crown. I put in extra work that just can't be found. Work. I took the sword out the stone, wasn't a thing. Dang. Look me in my eyes, cause I'm a king. I'm a king. Look me in my eyes, cause I'm a king. Yeah. king. God made me punch in accurate numbers. Yeah. My castle won't crumble. Nah. What I tackle will fumble. Yeah. I've been a leader when they ain't see it, but now my feet is up. up. According to me, royalty didn't end with King Tut. Nah. Crown on my head, clouds is at my legs. Yeah. Big says sky is the limit. I look down on the ledge. I push the bar like I'm opening a cell. Hands in my cookie jar, you won't come out with a single nail. You I need on. all of mine. The weight of my shoulders won't fit on a scale. What's a king to a giant? What? Well, Goliath fell. Even yeah. If we playing chess, dog, this king can't be checked I make all my moves on the board, I invented my steps uh -huh. I'm a king, the blood of a ruler, I feel like Mansa Musa Make your squad disappear like landing by the Bermuda Triangle, look at it from my angle I'm a king, the closest things are being one of God's angels yeah. I'm a king Heavy is the head that wears the crown. crown. I put in extra work that just can't be found work. I took the sword out the stone, wasn't a thing Dang. Look me in my eyes cause I'm a king, I'm a king. Look me in my eyes cause I'm a king. king Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night This is the Code of Conduct with the King Podcast I am your host Jay Spencer King And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I'm real excited about tonight's episode I, I'm excited all the time, but but I'm everybody knows who listens and who watches the Code of Conduct Y'all know I'm a special teams guy so my man that's joining me tonight, he's a linebacker for the Buffalo Bills, but I appreciate him because he's a special teams guy and he knows what he knows how important special teams is. So I want to welcome to the show my man Tyrell Dodson. What's up, man? Man, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. I'm excited. To talk ball, man. talk life, you know. Yeah, I appreciate you doing it, man. I know, uh, I know, especially this time of year, y'all a little busy. You know, you uh, had mandatory mini camp today. So yep. we'll get into that a little bit, but um, but first, let's just start off, you know, uh, how's it going for you? How's your off season so far? Man, it's going good. I mean, had to get away for a little bit, went to Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? Nice. Uh, that was my first time ever going to Jamaica, but uh, I've been um, in the process of my foundation. Uh, I have a youth camp on July 9th uh, every year. So we're just trying to get those things started and stuff like that, see, see how we can help the community a little bit more back home. Nashville, that's where I'm from. So... Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, dude, things are going good, man. Everything's falling in the right place, and I love it. Well, let's talk about your foundation real quick. I, I mean, I had a question about that later on, but you, you mentioned it now, so let's just talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about So, um, what is your foundation? I don't want to say what is it geared towards, because I know most times foundations, you just want to do right by people. But yeah, um, most times, some people kind of have a, a targeted group that they're trying to help. So can you kind of just get into it a little bit, let us know about it? Yeah, um, so my my foundation is really focused on the youth and underserved um, communities. Okay. Um, I, me growing up, I didn't have much. I was in an underserved community as, you know, sex aid housing and stuff like that. So uh, kind of give those kids uh, a, a different outlook on life throughout, you know, different events, um, sports, uh, and, and kind of like community gatherings, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. So um, um me as a kid, I wish I had you know NFL player to look up to and you know, go to go to his to go to his camps, go to his toy drives, go to his Thanksgiving um, turkey drives and just different stuff like that. So I'm a big I'm I'm a big family dude. Um, if you don't know me, um, I love family and I love like anybody who loves me, I love them. And if you don't love me, I probably love you too. But um, that that's just me. You know, I show love and you know um, that's basically the point of my foundation. You know, love. You know. Um, then I'm going to do anything to help anybody and stuff like that. So, yeah. Nah, I feel like, you know, um, I try to live, I try to live like that. Like I try to always, um, a on like Twitter and stuff, I always try to be encouraging and show people love on my yeah. show. I always talk about how we got to love each other, take care of each other and live in peace. And, uh, so, so now I respect that. I love that about it, man. And, um, one of the things that I was reading as I was kind of researching for, for tonight, you did something with, um, now I'm going to forget his name just because Chef Darian. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Chef Darian. Yeah. OK. So do you have um, do you have like a specific interest in like the culinary arts or was it something that you wanted to be a chef or something or at some point? Or <laughs> yeah. What 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 inspired you to, to do that? Yeah. So growing up, I always just like on Saturdays and uh, Sundays before like my youth football games or before church, I used to cook my mom breakfast in bed. 
Uh, so she used to get French. I was like 89, like 10, 11, 12, like throughout those ages. I was cooking like French toast, like eggs, like pancakes and eggs, like eggs, like like sandwiches and stuff like that. So that's kind of where my love came from. Like because my mom loved it so much, I, I like I started doing more stuff in college. The guys used to come to my house because they know Taco Tuesdays, T Dot's cooking uh tacos and just stuff like that. But um I I do have a love for it. I'm not as educated as Chef Darren yet, but he be giving me his tips and stuff like that. So that event was to support his culinary program um, that uh, he gives back to like uh, kids in the culinary school that uh, don't have like the right resources for the books, the knives, the you know, the, all that stuff. So uh, he asked me, "Can I partner with him?" You know, I mean, it's right downstairs under my apartment, so I was like, I can't say no. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool because yeah. um, and that's I mean, I guess it kind of also ties into your your foundation because I mean, if you're if you're real about it, like the areas that are under um underserved and under cared for, most times you don't you don't have uh, culinary arts classes or things like that available to them. So yeah. it, you absolutely are you know helping to open the door for some young people. So. No, that's cool, man. I'm a, I'm gonna bring that back up at the end of it, so that way people can know how to donate or how to kind of help yeah. out and, and yeah, be part sure. of it. Uh, but so let's let's get into it. Um, first, it, you know, it's the off season, so every everybody that comes on typically has like something that they're focusing on. So for you as a player, what are you working to improve as for yourself? Not not what the team is trying to do or nothing like that, but for yourself when you look at your tape from last season. Yeah, what's something that you're like? Okay, I gotta I gotta get this better i think i think it's just a it's just a consistent dom dominance you know um i know i can play with the best of them um but it's just it's just every day in and out you know um my mindset just like you know if you watch the same game special teams um ran over a double team ran over a dude and make the tackle like i need to bring that every single um down you know special teams if it's you know starting backing up jermaine if it's starting sam i need to bring that you know every single day because you know um I want that Super Bowl, so yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna do you know uh, everything I can for my team and stuff like that. So that's that's the main work consistency, and I think I've been doing a good job, you know, other you know backing up you know Tremaine and this Sergeant Sam and you know playing Will, you know, and just you know um, just knowing the ins and ins and out of the defense. So yeah, yeah. Now I'm with that because um, so. First, I was gonna go somewhere else, but let me let me say this first. So, <laughs> with you, with you, it's, it's funny. Everybody that's come on um, from this year's squad and even last year's squad, it seems like everybody has that same type of answer. Like, I just need to be more <clears throat> consistent. Is that something that is kind of like preached throughout the organization, where it's like consistency, and you know, or is it is it just something that all you guys kind of just that's something that players say? Yeah, it's kind of both though, because you know. Um, if, if, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse in this league. You know, let's be honest. Let's put that up front right there. So I think that's a, I think that's like a well-known around the NFL thing, keep it consistent. But guys that have it in their agenda are the ones I think is going to be successful, are the ones, the Von Millers that's playing 12, 13 years, a high caliber level and stuff like that. The Jordan Poirier's are all pro pro um, and stuff like that. So I think, I think that's the biggest trait you have to have to become a elite player at this league because yeah you have one one year ain't gonna get it done you know what i'm saying like to to, to establish your name on, on, in the books you have to be consistent every year so yeah no that's a fact and you just yeah. mentioned vaughn and it seems like you know um not even just speaking to players but it just seems like in general whenever you hear about like an elite or an all-time great player at a position um, it's either like, hey, the work ethic is different or they hungry. And it's like, what is it so far that you because I know is you you haven't really been around Vaughn a lot. But so yeah. far, what's something that you can say that you see that's like, oh, this dude is different? Yeah, Vaughn, I mean, going back to my A&M days, me and Vaughn have been close since A&M days. You know, um, uh, ever since I saw him, I just... Oh no, he's a freak too. So yeah, that talent. He he got he got a lot more talent than everybody else. But uh, I think I think his mindset. I think he has. I think he doesn't take it too seriously. And I think he like. I think he has a lot of fun. I think that's another trait you have to have to, you know, uh, to to be successful in this league. He's not taking it too seriously, but he's taking it serious enough. Where if a young guy is messing up, 
he's gonna correct them and stuff like that. So I think I think that's a big I think that's the biggest Von Miller trade. Like he doesn't take it too serious. He has fun with it. You know, at the end of the day, we're playing the child's game. You know, so I think I think yeah. that's Von's biggest trait. See, I just love that. And and uh, first, I do want to um, pay some respects to Jerry Hughes and and the guys that you know. What I mean, like, Jerry Hughes started this. Started this. Yeah. Jerry Hughes started this. Jerry, man, Jerry, Jerry. If you didn't know that, Jerry changed how I eat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. He used to call so, me fat, fat boy, and I, 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 yeah, I don't eat, I don't eat that way no more. So yeah. So, so Jerry changed the way you eat, and so how? And obviously, I know the the obvious answer, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, how much? How much did that improve your your game? And how much did just a diet? How much does that improve who you are as a player? Yeah, it, it, like I can run. Like I always could run, but like I could run like to two forty five all the way down to two thirty three, do a fourteen percent body fat all the way down to eight percent body fat. Okay. I think like, yeah, I, I just can run more. And I feel like more loose. I feel free. I feel like. I'm not doing that no more and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, the diet is everything. To be honest with you, he, he okay. just he just taught me how to eat more lean. Just cut out all like the candy at night, all the snacks and stuff like that. So kudos See, to Jerry. That's my problem. That's my problem. I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta chill. And you know what? I, so I'm on this whole thing. I'm about to start. Or I haven't. I'm not about to start. I started last week, like working out again and trying to get in shape. I went to so uh, Levi Wallace had his his classic in Tucson a couple weeks yeah. back, and I went down there and I was. Oh, you went, Jordan? Yeah, it yeah, was cool. Man, it was a good yeah. time. Levi, good dude, but I, man. Levi is an awesome dude. Like, yeah, he, he's so quiet. So it's like a lot of times he's not in front of the camera or he's not, you know, people don't get to hear him much, Slow but he's, he's like, he's such an awesome dude. His family's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is when I went down there with them, man, I felt like the fat cousin, you know what I mean? Like I was out there with them talking and I'm like, Oh no, I got to do it. So I'm, I'm kind of where you were well, not where you at, but I'm changing my diet and I'm working out every day. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I got, I got them boys to thank for that. So just like Jerry got in your head, Jordan yeah. and, and Levi got to me. Yeah. Uh, so, but hey, how was day one of uh, mini camp? What happened? You know, we saw some good reports of some things. Yeah. So, how how did it feel being out there? Boys was boys was competing today. Boys came out offense, defense. We we were competing, but uh, mini camp was fun today. Um, you know, Bobby Babbage, our new linebacker coach. Uh, mm -hmm. we got a couple. We got a couple new drills because you know, uh, his dad. You know, you know, he just has new drills and stuff like that. And you know. We love them. We love the new drills and um, install was good today. I mean, shoot. I mean, I think you're, I I can play right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. 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 You, you know what though? It feels like it feels like that's a consistent theme around the team though. It, it seems like everybody is ready right now. Like you know, yes, yeah, the off season, but yo, if the season started tomorrow, let's go. It, that's hey, what it feels like. And I, and it, it felt good to have like you know J. Paul back, Micah back, you know Vaughn there, you know the whole the, the whole squad, you know because like the, the people the like, us is it's that's what it's about, you know like the locker room like talking to J. P. today for like five ten minutes, it just felt good to you know hear his voice again, you know what I'm saying like it's pretty cool for everyone to be back together. So let me ask you this thing, because going into the season, it's different. Like, it's, it's di and I know last year, um, a lot of people looked at the Buffalo Bills, like the media and just fans across the nation, looked at the Bills as like a top four or five team. Yeah. But now, the media and really everywhere I go, whenever people see I'm a Bills fan, they're like, oh, y'all might do it this year. So it's like the conversation is different. Um, what's the message from Coach McDermott? What's the what? How is it in the building where – we're trying to keep everybody focused without letting all this hype go to our heads. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Mickey, you know, Mickey D uh, trust the process. You know, he's going to keep he screams at every single day, all day long. You know, and and that's a fact. You know, and uh, today we had a meeting. He said, ignore the noise. You know, kind of like what they're putting out. Like Bills are favored to win this and that. You know, um, at the end of the day, our article never won anything. So we gotta go out there, put our best foot forward, you know. It, it start and it's, it it starts all the way back to OTAs, you know what I'm saying? The the season don't start, you know, first game of the season. It started, you know, OTAs and train and mini camp and training camp to the preseason games, you know, all that stuff adds up. So I I, I think I think in my opinion, we've been doing a good job, you know, communicating uh, the whole defense be on the same page, um, and um, you know. The backups are playing well and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm excited to see what we do, you know, but we, we got to show it, you know.
Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just looking forward to it for a few different reasons. A, obviously we all miss football, but 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 B, man, like honest to God, and I mentioned this actually when I who was I talking to? Um I had one of the guys on a few weeks back and I was saying how this it like it felt like the year last year. Yeah. And then in a weird way, I feel like our team is better <laughs> than last year's team. So it's like if I felt like last year was the year, then I definitely damn sure feel like this year is the year. Yeah. So um, moving on, I, I don't want to, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, no, I'm excited, real talk. I'll be yeah, I'm excited hype, too, man. I'm excited, just as excited as you, man. I'm I'm fired up. Like, I'm ready. Like, it's not even about my play, bro. I'm I'm ready to see, like, Tremaine, like I, y'all, y'all just ain't y'all ain't seen y'all y'all ain't just wait, just wait. Yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited to see Tremaine and Matt Ball, you know, and then me behind him and and, and Terrell Renard too, you know. So I'm excited. You know what? Let's talk about Tremaine for a hot second. And, <laughs> and I know, like I know, I got you on as a guest, and and, and I promise. Nah, you, bro, I love showing love to the bros. You know, um, I feel like Tremaine gets unwarranted hate. A yeah, lot. I, no, and, don't get me um, started. Well, and well, I'm gonna get you started. I want to get you started because, <laughs> because the thing is, I always, you know, you see, I got this my sign back here. I love Tremaine, you know, and and the, the reason of being is, is like when I watch his film and I watch the game, I feel like nine times out of ten he's doing exactly what his assignment is. Yeah. And a lot of times as fans, we think because we played Pop Warner or we played, you know, in high school and we was the coach or you know we think that yeah. we know the game, and a lot of times he's in the right position to do exactly what the coaches want him to do. And then he'll get blamed for something or because he's not, um, I don't even know who I want to compare him to right now, but because he's not playing like a, a hall of fame, you know, a first ballot hall of fame linebacker, people feel like he's not good. Can you just explain for a moment for, for those of us who, who'd like to blame Tremaine for a lot of things. Can you just explain how much of a beast this dude is? Because I, I see it. Like, I know there are throws that yeah. quarterbacks don't make because he's so tall over the middle. Yeah. It's just, you know, this, that, I have the, I have our, I have our thing right here, number one defense last year. Mm -hmm. We don't have that number one defense without that mic that's communicating, like getting people, he gets people lined up. Like, he has, and he makes sure everyone's on the same page. That's just like, that's just like saying Josh ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like we have the number one defense in the league because of him. Like, he's the one who's calling the calls. If we don't get a call, if our mic messes up, he's running the whole show. Mm. He's putting us in the, he's putting us in places to make plays for, you know, for, for Michael, for Jordan, for for Dane on the outside, for Jadavis. Like he's he's putting us like in defenses, like when our mic's broke and stuff like that. So I mean, I I, I just I hate it when people I see different stuff and like people don't understand like a six five people people are not throwing down the middle. No. We don't have too many we you you have not seen too many deep too, too many offenses in the last four to five years throw a slant route in the middle. Yeah. And that's why they push the ball downfield. That's why we have the number one, you know in Jordan Micah, like it's just it all works itself out, but I'm I'm gonna let Maine show him this year because he he's been he's been playing very good. Yeah, he definitely gonna show him, but I feel like he's been showing him, but there's still a disconnect, and I don't understand it because so the thing that's gonna bother me, and I'm hoping that this don't happen, but the thing that's gonna bother me, um, I'm hoping it's not like a repeat of what happened with um, Stephon Gilmore. I got him on my computer screen over here. Like I love that dude. There's a couple guys that we ran out of Buffalo. And I'm hoping that, you know, A, the team can figure out the financials. We're not going to get into contracts yeah, and stuff. But I'm, but I'm also yeah. hoping that that the fan base starts to appreciate these guys. Because yeah. like you mentioned, without him, we may have still been a good defense. Yeah, we still, yeah. We, but, but we're not number one. I agree. Him. We're not. And, no. and I just, you know, and it bothers me when when the fan, this is our team. And we talking bad about these boys. I just don't yeah. get it, man. I don't yeah. get it. It is what it is, you know. He, he, when he when he holding up the Super Bowl, everybody gonna be a fan of him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what? And my hot take this year is that he's gonna be an All Pro linebacker this year. That's that's my that's my. I don't even think it's a hot take. Him and him and Matt Milano have been playing like All Pros for four or five years. Yeah, that's my and opinion. I, think, I mean, and now I think with the with the improved defensive line. I think mm -hmm. that it's going to really give them a chance to just work. And I think yeah. what's going to happen this year, man, it's going to be scary. If y'all thought last year's number one defense was scary, it's going to be scary for some boys, man. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. 
I see it every day. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to run behind that. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so. so, well, let's talk about your role a little bit. Um, at the top of the show, I mentioned how, obviously, um, for those who listen and who, who watch the show, they know, like, I, I preach special teams because I feel like yeah. it's super important. And a lot of times um, it's undervalued by people. Can you explain um, from your perspective why special teams is such an important role and, and it truly is one third of the team instead of it just being like a small part? I mean, yeah, I mean. I'm not. I'm, I don't want to go back flashbacks and stuff like that. But you. But you know what happened last year. You know special teams. You know stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, how, I don't. I don't. I don't understand how people don't think it's to, uh, important because it's the first play of every game. You True. set the. You set the tone with special teams. Like kickoff, you set the tone. Kickoff return. You. You take it down to the fifty. You set the tone. Like yeah, we here. Like you. Yeah. You go. You go see us all day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, yes, I mean, shoot, especially uh, <laughs> yes, is, is, is how I made a living, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, people, yeah, it's very important to me and, and to Coach McDermott because if you, if, you, if you can't play special teams, you're not going to be in the league for long. I mean, that's a fact. That's a fact. And, and I feel like um, one of the things that's overlooked the most is um, – Obviously, obviously, we always talk about the kick and punt returners and we talk about the kickers and the punters. But the the guys who are in coverage, like the guys who are, you know, you got to stay in your lanes to, to get down and make the tackle. Mm-hmm. Or you got to you got to block a certain way. Like, I feel like those are those are overlooked. And um, again, not to go backwards, but I was actually explaining uh, somebody challenged me about Andre Roberts a, a little bit back. And I was saying he was successful in Buffalo because we have players in Buffalo that know what they're doing in those roles. You go to the Texans, respect to the Texans, even though they're not that respect. good, but yeah, <laughs> respect to them. I don't, I don't see the, I don't see them having the same caliber of, of team, obviously. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're going to, he's, his, his play is going to not be as good if you don't have the same type of guys blocking, you don't have the same mm-hmm. schemes and all this other stuff. So I, I just, I don't understand why it's overlooked, man. And, and I just want to say to you face to face here, I appreciate you and everything Thank that you, you do for special teams. It's something that I, when I tell you, man, I preach special teams. You should, you should, man. It's just like, you know, Tyler Malakavich, uh, Saran Neal, Andre Smith, Taiwan, we got Taiwan. Kondo, we got Reggie Gilliam. We got Jay Kumaro. Like those guys can like to be honest, those guys can go play anywhere and be a starting safety, starting linebacker. But mm-hmm. we play special teams here, and that that's how crazy it is. Like all of us can go start somewhere else. But you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of crazy how it works. <laughs> you know, and that's the, I guess that's the the reason why for me it feels different this year too, and last year because like you said, the depth on this team. You could literally take somebody. You could take Siran Neal off, and and he could go and start for probably twenty other teams in the league. Yeah, and that's just it's just crazy to even say that about my Buffalo Bills. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Coach McDermott and Brandon Bean working, going crazy, playing chess. Yeah, man, that dude Bean is a mastermind. Yeah, Bean, so, my dude, Bean's awesome. How was your experience? So, um, when you first came to the team, you know, what was your what was your first experience with the team in the city like? You know, oh, uh, so. I thought we were going to be in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> I hate telling people that, but I thought, I was like, yo, I'm going to the city. I'm, never, I'm from Nashville. I'm a country boy. I ain't never been in no city. But then I got to Buffalo. I was like, oh, this ain't no city. But, it, I mean, I mean, Buffalo's been awesome ever since. I mean, I love it here. It's a blue collar. You know, everyone works hard. And, you know, everyone loves beer and football. That's yeah. all it is. But that, you know what? That's all it is. With the with your um with your comment about you thought it was gonna be in the city, you're not the only one, man. Like you go back to Thurman, and, like them boys. If you watch like the Four Falls of Buffalo, they say it on there. Like, man, I thought when I got drafted by the Bills, I was gonna be in the city. So no, it's it's cool, but but yeah. man, the food is undefeated. The oh. People are undefeated. You know Yo. the fans. You're not gonna find a, a better fan base in the organization. Like you can't like I know people say Buffalo is cold, but like. You cannot get better than this, man. It's like the organization is bar none, like for, for, for what they did, for what they have done for me and my family, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I don't want to be anywhere else, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
they got to drag me out of here. <laughs> hey, we don't want you to go nowhere else, man. We want, we want you to stay. We want you to help bring that, that championship yeah. to Western New York for the first time, man. Yeah, like, man. we need that. We need that. Real quick, I got, a, I got a few more questions for you. But before we do, I do have a, a quick message from my man, Buffalo Freddy. Okay, here's the deal. I know as Bills fans, we wait all year for the fall and the winter so we can go to the Bills games. I get it. Trust me, I do. But let me tell you why this time of the year is elite. It's party time. And we're going to party for so many reasons, whether it's a graduation party, a birthday party, family reunion, or just because it's Saturday and the weather's perfect. Here's the thing. My guy, Buffalo Freddy, has everything you need to make your party the best party of the year. We have everything from chairs and tables to premium tents, water slides, wet and dry bounce houses, and so much more. And that's not all. The best barbecue catering in Western New York has you covered, whether it's a small party or a corporate gathering. Buffalo Freddy Barbecue Catering makes everything easy for you. Rentals and bookings available now at www.buffalofreddy.com, or you can call 716-4-FREDDY. That's 716 437 Three 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 nine. Remember, for all your party rental needs, just call for Freddie. Okay, so I might you hit mentioned, up. yeah, you got to hit him up. Yo, the barbecue <laughs> is fire. Let me just tell you, the barbecue <laughs> is fire. <laughs> but yo, real quick, um, you mentioned that you was from Nashville, right? So, yeah. how does it feel like the couple times that the Bills had to go to Tennessee and play? It felt like a home game, man. Like, <laughs> how wild was that for you? Man, it's wild, but. My family getting on my nerves because we didn't beat them <laughs> in my time. Like, me playing, we didn't beat them. So, that's what I got to hear all day, every day, man. Just my brother is a big Titans fan. He's a, the biggest Titans fan ever. And he's just in my ear about about it all day long. It's all good. We're going to get him week two. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get him. We're going to get him week two for sure. But, yeah. it, I mean, it's cool. It's cool. You know, me and Dawson are close. So, you know, we – you know, Dawson's from Nashville too. So, yep. You know, we get our, all of our family tickets in the same section, you know. How about 40 tickets? I, I probably won't get a game check that week. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. It's cool. You know, um, I, I, used, I used to do punt pass and kick in that stadium, okay. you know. Um, so wow. it's, it's kind of crazy how, you know, I went to play in that stadium. It's crazy. It's wild how it comes full circle, man. I, um. <laughs> You know, I was actually one time I had Benny on here, Benny the Butcher on here, and he was talking about how he I know it's different, like he's not an athlete, but um, he was talking about how he used to like work at the stadium and he used to clean the bathrooms what? and all that stuff. He, Benny the Butcher used to? Yeah, he used to clean the, the bathrooms at the stadium, and now he's doing the, the remix to the anthem. You know, it's like it, that boy it's just, live. That boy cold. Yeah, yeah. That boy, <laughs> Benny cold, man. That boy Shout Benny to, different. Yeah, shout out to Benny and Griselda and and uh, yeah. just everybody in that crew. But yeah, but yeah, it's just it, it's wild when I hear stories like that, man. It's so inspirational to to hear like you know you was doing, you know, all of these different things there as a youth, and now like you go back to play. But it's okay, you are gonna get that dub there. Yeah, okay. we need that dub. We need that dub so I can talk all kind of stuff to my family. So is that the is that the game for you personally that you have circled on the calendar? That yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not supposed to look ahead, but every time I see the Titans on the schedule, I try to bring my best. Like, you know, I try to like do everything I can. Yeah, yeah, man, and I get it. I get it because um, it, it's it's for Bills fans. You know, you got a you got a certain section like the older fans hate Miami, right? Because in in mm -hmm. the early days that was the thing. Then you got like my age group. We hate the Patriots. Patriots, yeah, yeah, what it is, yeah. I feel like the Jets are kind of just like, okay, y'all here, y'all in the division. That's how the fans look at. It. I know you can't say that, but I'm saying like that's how we look at them. Like y'all here, okay, yeah. Um, around the league, what what other team? I'm not asking where you would go because you you gonna stay a Bill, but I mean, what other team do you look at at this point now um, in our conference? And you're like, okay. If it's not us, like, or this is who we got to go through to really make that happen. I mean, Kansas City. I mean, that's yeah. that. I mean, that's how I've been on Kryptonite for the last two years. I mean, um, yeah, Kansas City. I mean, I, I don't see any other team giving us a run for our money other than Kansas, Kansas City. You know, um, and and I don't know Cincinnati. I don't, yeah, Cincinnati kind of, but like Kansas City, like I. I we got we got to get them this year. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think I, I think that's the, the, the I think that's the team for us to get over that hump or to show up like to show the world we're over that hump. We have to beat Kansas City consistently. 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like the that's Bulls my point. Pistons. Yeah, 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 back in yeah. The day, yeah. Until the Bulls got over the Pistons, it, it was like yeah. I don't care how great Jordan was, you got to beat the Pistons, and yeah. So I could see that. Um, you you mentioned the the Bengals. I got a hot take. Y'all ready for it? I don't think that they're gonna make the playoffs this year. Really? Yeah, and it's not a diss to them. What? I, I love I love their quarterback. I Why do you say that? Solid. Well, for two reasons. Um, the Baltimore Ravens are not gonna have twenty six guys on injured reserve this year. Man, twenty six guys on injured reserve. 26 guys that were injured that was out like they replaced their, their whole running but they do <laughs> but the whole running backs room was basically gone jk dobbins got injured in, in the preseason and like it was wow. a lot that happened to that team then we don't know what's going to happen with deshaun watson but if deshaun watson is the quarterback in cleveland and he gets to play cleveland ain't, ain't putting baker on the field no more that quarterback position isn't going to be a weakness yeah I, mm. and then i mean now this could be a little bit biased I actually, I, I think Mitch is going to do pretty good out there in Pittsburgh as well if he wins the starting. I think I, th I think Mitch will too. I think I I, I actually like Mitch. I, I, I like I like I like him as a quarterback. He did so some again, last year I like him. Well, so that's why I'm saying, and, and like I said, it's not a diss to Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati did everything that they needed to do to get to the Super Bowl. They were good, but I just think it also had like the, the chips fell a certain way for them. Yeah, it did because you know, if they would have mm -hmm. it would have been. Mm. Yeah, they would have came to Buffalo. <laughs> that thing wouldn't have been that. So nah. I'm just saying the chips fell and 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 it happened. But I I don't see them make it. And not just them. You figure the entire AFC got better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you're looking at the Raiders got better. Um, really, you could go through teams, man. The I think Chargers the Jets and the, and the Dolphins got better too. I mean, I do. Let's talk I, about I, on that. paper. On paper, they got better. On paper. Yeah, like, let's talk paper. about that. Yeah. How much do you think? Um, Tariq Hill is going to make a difference to the offense down there. I I, I think I mean to be honest with you, I think Tariq Tari Hill can go any offense and make a and make a drastic change. Like he's he's Tariq Hill. He's a thirty million dollars man for a reason. But we got to see how him and Tua work together. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he probably come out catching a little bit of slants, you know, uh, like you know screens and stuff like that. Just probably early in the season, probably just to get the chemistry going and stuff like that. That's what I'm expecting, you know, him getting doing screens, jet sweeps, that that kind of stuff. Um, probably once in a while, double move and stuff like that. So, I mean, I feel like the Dolphins, I mean, they're, they're trying to make moves, you know what I'm saying? They got um, that left tackle out from the Saints, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they make so, they making moves. They yeah, are, but they're, they're, they're making moves. And, you know, so. Well, Tariq was on a podcast, man, and he was saying that two was more accurate than Mahomes, and you didn't see that. <laughs> I'm not going to be on that media like that. Yo, he he really was out there, and he said he said Mahomes has a stronger arm, but he said when it comes to accuracy, he said Tua got him. He was like Tua is the most accurate guy that he's played with. And my, my thing is, I understand you know you are on a team, so you got to you got to big up your team. I yeah, he do, he do, he do. But you got to be honest too. Like you can't like if there's if if Josh Allen wasn't my quarterback. It, I would want Patrick Mahomes, you know, or oh, like, of course, you get what I'm saying? Like there, it, Tua wouldn't be the conversation for me. And he's going to sit here and be like, he's more accurate. I just think it's wild. I think, I do think that they improved as a team, um, but I agree with you. I think the Jets did too. I think people yeah, are sleeping Jets. on the moves that the Jets made. Yeah. I like, I like the Jets. I like, you know, when I got that tight end CJ, I'm actually close with them. Uh, CJ Uzma, what is his name? Mm -hmm. um, they got, you know, I like Sauce Gardner and the DN. I feel like, I feel like they're doing the right things to be successful. <clears throat> yeah, I like Sauce a lot too. I actually, obviously, I knew where our draft position was. We wouldn't get him, but like you know, um, prior to now, and we drafted a good cornerback. So I'm not saying yeah. I preferred him over, but um, you know, oh yeah, no, he he's nice, and I'm I'm very happy with the selection. Uh, but you know, before going into the draft, it's like, man, if we could get Sauce to pair with Trey, yeah, that'd be lethal. But but now I'm I'm with what we did. I'm with it. Hey Spence, do you think Sauce would have been good in our in our scheme though? Um the way you're asking that, I'm guessing not, but but the but the way I looked at it, I look at I look at talent first. And I understand okay, like, yeah. scheme fits matter, but I think certain mm -hmm. guys like for instance Vaughn, I'm not I'm not putting sauce on the same level as Vaughn, but I feel like Von Miller is the type of talent that he can pretty much he could fit into different schemes okay i, I okay so, I, I, didn't I, like that. I didn't think about it like that i didn't think about it like that i agree yeah. i agree <clears throat> so but but i'm looking forward to it and and i still think that 
you know, I think the division is going to fall pretty similar to how it did last year, though. I think it's going to be us, New England, Miami, and then the Jets. The Jets improved, but I don't think they improved enough yet. Really, the question for me is, well, no, the question is a quarterback, just like Miami. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Miami went further with Tua already. So, I mean, I just feel like um, as much as I, I, I like the Jets, but you got to be pro- – just like everybody was talking about the Bills after the first two years of Josh. It's like, well, you know, Josh got to show us. He got to sh- – and now he showed us. He, he's, mm-hmm. he's shown us for real that he that dude. That so dude we got to see what – we got we to gotta see what the Jets do. He threw a pass today. I said, Lord, 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 help me. <laughs> yo, I love – He was um, looking that way. He threw that thing that way. I was like, yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love all the stories, like, from, from campus or from practice. Like, last year, Emmanuel Sanders, he told this one story so many times, but it's like – when when he first got there and how Josh threw it and he was like so this is normal like everybody just looking around like oh yeah that's Josh and he was looking like yo what? I love hearing the stories can you tell us I know you just kind of talked about it but just tell us about how that how that play played out yo I just he I like he was just looking left and he threw it right and I was like oh I guess I'm going the wrong way <laughs> and I'm off a quarterback vision so yeah it was crazy but you know <clears throat> Everyone, everyone in the wide receiver room, always complaining about their hands hurting. For real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would. I, I. I don't know why I would have assumed that. Now at this point, you know, people have gotten used to it. But I guess you don't yeah. get used to that. No, you don't get used to it. It's you crazy. Got to stay ready for him. So, I what is he it. like around the building? <clears throat> he's goofy, man. He's he he's brought, I, he is a big kid in the facility. Never serious. I mean, unless it's that time to be serious, but right, right. Never serious. So, like, he, he's insane. I I can't tell you stories, but because I got you on the, on the other side of the spectrum, but he's crazy. So he really is that dude that walks around um, quoting the office all day. And yes, you know, I'm jokes. like, <laughs> like if you if you if he asks you a question, don't answer it. Don't answer it because it's gonna be it, it, it's a setup. It's a setup for sure. Hundred <laughs> percent a setup. <laughs> All right, we got a couple questions in the comments here. Um, tell us about Bernard, how he's been so far. Yeah, I mean, Terrell's, Terrell's coming along. I mean, um, he, he he has a lot right now, you know, to special teams to learn the defense. But, I mean, Terrell's going to be okay. He, he actually pulled me aside today after a punt meeting, and we watched more clips of punt, you know, him and Balin. So I, I think those two, those two dudes are going to be okay, you know. Rell's a smart dude too, you know. Um, yeah, I think he's gonna be all right. And um, so we also mentioned earlier about the new, um, some of the new coaching staff that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, what adjustments th- that you see so far? Do you feel like the defense is gonna take another step forward and improve, or like what do you like so far that you feel like will really help? Yeah, I like I, I like our linebacker coach. He's um, he, he's really teaching us. Um, um, how how to defend the pass, you know what I'm saying? As like man coverage or zone coverage, like <clears throat> like we're learning stuff that we never really learned before. And just <clears throat> he's big on keys, you know what I'm saying? Like we watched I I, um, I cut up of a lot of clips of last year, and it's so much meat on the bone, bro. It's so much mm-hmm. plays out there to be made if we just fix our eyes, you know what I'm saying? So. I think he's going to be good for me, Tremaine and Matt and Terrell, you know, uh, even Tyler and all of us, you know, he's, I think he's going to be good. I think he's, I, I, I think we're going to play the best ball yet because he he's preparing us to play like the best in the world right now. So I'm excited to see that. And um, um, on the back end, you know, Jimmy Salgado, he's been there forever. He's a safeties coach now, but you know, he's been in the system. He, he's well liked. Everyone loves Jimmy. Um, JB, Jimmy, uh, what was John Butler, JB, uh, uh, passing game coordinator. He's awesome. He's he's crazy. He's he's, he's one of my favorite. Uh, but then you know Eric Washington, same 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 with E. You know, uh, very high energy, very smart. And um, you know we got a couple of assistants. Uh, Jalen Finner in my linebacker room. He's he he's really smart and he was really helping us. Uh, Kyle Schumer um, and stuff like that. So I I feel like I feel like I feel like they're putting people in the building, you know, to help us win. I, I love it, you know. You know what's crazy, man? You, you just said, like, you looked at the, the film from last year and, and there's so much meat on the bone and there's just, like, so much to do. We had the number one defense, man. Like, 
You know what I mean? Like, it just think it, it just amazes me to hear that because it's like, how much more dominant could we really be? We could have been a lot more dominant. That's just wild. Like, that's really wild for me to, to imagine. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, and I know you're on defense, but what are your impressions of, of Ken Dorsey's leadership at this point, taking over the um, offense for, for Dayball? Yeah, yeah. So, Ken, Ken, Ken's another well-liked coach. Like, he's probably the most liked coach in, in, on the staff, you know what I'm saying? Because he's played there. He's, he's been in, in our shoes. He, he knows what it's like. I mean, but he's he was also with Josh for how many years? Like, three or four years? So, mm-hmm. he, jo- Josh knows him in, in and out. And I feel like that relationship, you know um, – there's no better person for the job, you know what I'm saying? For you know, other than Cam being you know OC, but I feel like he's you know he he's act- I actually saw a clip of him throwing like balls to people. So like yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you know he, he's very hands on. I mean, so I I feel like him and Josh get along well, and they and they kind of know what each other's thinking. So I feel like the offense gonna excel. I can't wait to see it because I you know. Um, I feel like one of the things that as a fan um, or the fan base kind of, I don't want to say we complain about, but we were complaining when it comes to the offense last year, there were um, like screen plays and certain things that yeah. we didn't do as, as often as a lot of other teams do. Yeah. And I feel like um, we're going to have added wrinkles, I think. And I also just, just listening to him talk, man, I feel like it's going to be pedal to the metal. Like I don't think it's going to be one of those, like methodical okay mm-hmm. we're gonna do it. I, I like i really feel like it's gonna be exciting team to watch on both offense and defense and really even special teams um i have a question in the comments here but before that about special teams i want to ask um so we, we signed tavon austin and yeah you know i i imagine it's for some competition on the punt and kick of return course. spot um, how do you how do you see that battle and i know you really haven't even been into the battles yet but how do you how do you view that going I mean, I, I mean, cream rises to the top. I mean, competition, you know, brings the best out of us, you know, to be honest with you. So um, I was surprised. I didn't know Tavon Austin. I thought he would have been on a different team. I, I was surprised. He said he was sitting on the couch, you know, first round. Like, I, I love the whole segment he, he, he said. But, um, yeah, I mean, shoot, he, I used to watch his highlights before high school. I even told him that. He was like, hey, we're here now. we still we're in the same building, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. Tavon's actually been actually been very good for like you know the younger the younger wide receivers. I've seen him seen him coaching you know and stuff like that. Right. I see him like you know being hands on and stuff. So I feel like the power return, kick off return competition gonna be kind of spicy this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so, gonna reach out to him. I'm gonna see if I can get him on so he can kind of yeah. talk about just his journey because like you mentioned, he's been one of those guys that you know. He, Everybody grew up watching his, his um, like, I mean, he was that dude. So, he was that dude. Yeah, yeah, he was that dude. So, I, yeah, yeah. I'll reach out to him. We got another uh, question in the comments here. Um, Hamlin is going to his third season. How do you view him this season? Or how do you view his development oh, going into this season? Yeah, DeMar, DeMar first off, DeMar is, a, is probably one of the best dudes in the locker room. Uh, he's a good dude. Nice. Started with um, guys clothing line and stuff like that. But I see him, I see him excelling, you know, um, Bro, he, I mean, you got Kondo, you got Kondo third and fourth. I mean, I mean, you plug it, you plug him and Kondo, uh, you know, you know, Jordan and Michael wasn't there the first part, phase one, phase two. And we, he didn't miss a beat. He didn't miss a nice. beat. You know what I'm saying? Him and JT, you know, and Josh Thomas. So the, the Mar, the Mar is going to be okay. Yet. You know, uh, special teams, he's at the kick side five right now. He's making plays like, He's gonna have a good season. I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward, you know, to playing beside him. He's a good dude too. I love good dudes. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. The, and you know what? That's the to me. That's the best part about being a fan of the Bills too. It feels like um, top to bottom, you know. And, and I don't know everybody yet, you know. Yeah. But, but all of the guys that I've gotten a chance to get to know and everybody I've interviewed, it seems like the entire team for the most part is just good dudes. Like it's a locker room full of good dudes. I mean, you got to know Coach McDermott because McDermott don't play around when it comes to behavior. Right. <laughs> you, you're going to be the first one out, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. Yeah, well, well, it's a good thing then. Everybody. <laughs> uh, we got my man JR here. He he wants to know, uh, what's your favorite local eating buffalo? Is oh, you messed me up oh, with that one. They're going to be mad at me, man. <laughs> so, hey, I'm going to say I'm going to say two. I'm going to go Mulberries and Giancarlo's. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with either one. Yeah, you can't go wrong. But my wing spot, 
There's more room. More room. Yeah. Is that on hurdle? Okay. A hurdle, I think. A hurdle. No, what is that? Is more room on hurdle? I don't know. I'll put it in my address and I go there. But no, I, actually, I mean, but I respect it because most people get on here and be like bar bill or they'll say, nah. you know, like it's like it's like three that they'll always mention. This is the first time. So I, I appreciate you being different from everybody. Yeah, else. more more room. I actually got my own wings. there called the Dotson. So it's lemon pepper and buffalo. So I'm going to check them out. I'm going to check, check them out. out. Yeah, um, that's crazy. That's the first. What's your, what's your, where do you like to get pizza from in Buffalo? Car Carbones. I think it's Car Carbones. Carbones. I'm not Carbones familiar. or Cardones. It's 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 either Cardones or Carbones. Okay. I put it in. Right. No, hold, 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 let me see. Let me see. Hold on. <laughs> let me check it out. Let me check it out. Hold on. It's just crazy too, because again, like so, the food, the food um, conversation when it comes to Buffalo, and really every city has something that they feel like they're carbones, proud of. carbones right here, carbones. Okay, we gonna try carbones to. Carbones should pay me for doing this right now. <laughs> yeah, carbones, get my man an endorsement, man. Let's. They get got the honey crust sesame. The honey crust sesame <laughs> crust. <laughs> Yo. Let me go ahead and write that down for when I'm right, right, right. back crusted, home. Honey, crust, honey sesame crusted. Cr yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, yeah, I got you. <laughs> I got you. But it's funny because everywhere, every city has like some type of food that they feel like, you know, hey, we champion this. I don't like, I really don't like pizza nowhere else, man. Like, I'm, so I moved to Arizona. I'm out here now full time. Dude, I, I haven't eaten pizza here. You moved to yesterday. Arizona? Yeah, I've been out here now for two years. Well, what you doing out there? There's... Working. I moved out here. I work for the state. Actually, I work for the state of Arizona. I'm a, a okay. budget analyst. So I basically I make sure that um, every department in the state spends all their money. Because if yeah, not, then their budgets get cut. Does. And then, yeah, it's it's a cool, it's a chill I think job. That's what my mom does for state of Tennessee. Okay, I mean it's a cool job and it's yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it allows me the freedom to be able to to maintain the show yeah, and that's go awesome, travel bro. when I want. Yeah, man. You're I'm grinding, so, bro. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Yeah, you might not think I was here as much as I'm in Buffalo. It seems like I'm there every week, but you know. Yeah, you got a cool little setup too, dude. I was, I was keeping it. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. So before we get out of here, I mentioned that I was gonna um bring back up your your um foundation. So um yeah. is there a way that we can kind of get involved and help out, or is there any events coming up that you want to talk about so that way we can get involved? Yeah, so the foundation is pretty new, so we're just trying, you know, figure out logistics, see who's only gonna be on the board. Uh, but my website should be up tomorrow, um, or or tonight. It might be up already. Uh, we have to, you know, get the domain was acting weird and stuff like that. But TyroDotsonFoundation.com. Um, you can donate in the right in the right upper hand corner. Um, PayPal, anything. I take demo, anything. You know, um, just to, you know, help me out. You know, so I can give back to the community. You know, stuff like that. But that's about it. Hey, man, I love it, and I appreciate it. I appreciate your time on here. Um, is there anything that you want to say to Bill's Mafia before we get on out of here? Mm, be patient, Bill's Mafia. Be patient. It's going to come. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. But I appreciate you for having me, Spence, for real, dude. This is fun. No, anytime. As a matter of fact, I'm going to flex for a quick second. Before we went live, he gave me, like, the best compliment that a player has given me. I, I just so I don't know if this was supposed to just be private, but he said to me, like, yo, I'm happy I'm doing this with you because you're one of my favorite media dudes. And y'all don't understand how that made me feel. I almost ran through a wall. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you, dude. Yeah, for real. Salute. So look, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know how I do it over here. Y'all take care of each other. Y'all love each other and live in peace. And as always, stay positive, test negative, go Bills. <laughs> <laughs>